So whether you just started no contact or you are months in, there are certain things you should never do. Not only will these things, these mistakes, prevent you from healing and growing as a person, but they will also sabotage your reattraction attempts if that's your goal. So here they are. Starting with number one, the first thing you should not do when in no contact repression and suppression. So suppressing or repressing your emotions means you push them down instead of feeling them completely. The only difference between the two is that when we repress our emotions, we push them down unconsciously and when we suppress them, we push them down consciously. In both cases, the more you do it, the worse you will feel and the more mood swings, temper tantrums and general irritability you will experience while trying to maintain no contact. Escapism is the second thing you should not do that I want to point out. And this is when you avoid facing or overcoming painful feelings by indulging in various trivial pursuits or dumb distractions. Now these can be playing video games, exercising, drinking, shopping, and so on. Just don't get me wrong, there is nothing wrong about occasional distractions, but it is wrong when those distractions become very, very frequent. For example, playing video games for a few hours every day to get your mind off no contact, that's fine, that's even kind of healthy. But having a two-week, 24-7 video game binge to keep you preoccupied, that's clearly unhealthy. That's not what you want to do. They move on to our third, I guess, big mistake or thing you don't want to do when in no contact. It's overexpression. So this is just another word for very lousy emotional management. And well, this is something that very, very frequently pops up in the first few months, especially the first few weeks of no contact. It happens to almost everyone. The whole thing essentially refers to venting your negativity and frustration to the point where it gets very smothering and annoying for the person or the people you are interacting with. Validation seeking. This is the fourth thing you should not do when in no contact. So basically this means seeking confirmation in something. In your case, this is usually the answer to whether or not your ex still feels something for you. Now, seeking validation is very counterintuitive to doing no contact. Like, how are you supposed to cut communication, take care of yourself, focus on yourself, grieve your relationship, and ultimately either move on or get back with your ex if you are still nagging them and looking to get something from them? It's counterproductive, it's a recipe for disaster, it's going to make you and them really fucking frustrated and annoyed, and you don't want to do it. It's that simple. And besides, even if you do get some validation, you will likely find that it falls short of what you expected it would feel like. And this is because the validation you actually need right now is internal validation coming from yourself, not external validation coming from your ex or just about anyone. Moving on to the fifth thing you should not do during no contact, having high expectations. When you go no contact, I want you to expect nothing. I want you to act as if your ex is out of the picture until proven otherwise. That is, until they reach out and give you kind of the green light that, hey, you can pursue me, I'm interested. Likewise, Please don't delude yourself into thinking that no contact will be easy. It will hurt, sometimes pushing you to the brink of madness. And I want you to expect it. I want you to visualize it, in fact, and therefore mentally prepare yourself for any and all worst-case scenarios. Now, as for the sixth thing on our list you should avoid, it's obsession. A lot of people... They obsess about their ex a lot during no contact. And it's safe to say that that's probably the worst 
thing you can do. It only amplifies frustration and stress and worry and fear. It makes you act more needy. It makes you act out of panic. Obsession truly is the cataclyst for sabotaging behaviors and sabotaging tendencies, be that in terms of reattraction as well as recovery. For example, stalking an ex or blowing up their phone suddenly by texting and calling them all the freaking time. So if you find yourself obsessing over your ex, and here's a hint, you've probably watched like five of these videos already, remind yourself it's bad for your sanity and to stay no contact, and then distract yourself with something else, something healthy that can hold your interest and engage you. But like I alluded to before, not to a point where it becomes escapism or some unhealthy form of distraction. So we're almost at the end. I just want to quickly promote my cheat sheet. If you want your eggs back and you want to learn how I would go about it, how I would go about reattraction, download my reattraction cheat sheet. Link in the description down below this video. But anyway, let's go to the seventh thing you should not do when in no contact. And that is bad mouthing your ex. Put plainly, don't talk shit about your ex to your friends and especially not mutual friends. Look, I know you're emotional right now, but you've got to prevent yourself from slipping. Regardless of how often friends promise that they will not tell your ex what you've said, there's always one or two bad actors who will. So keep note of that. As for our final thing you should not do when in no contact, it's handling social media immaturely. So basically what I mean here is don't stalk your ex, don't share cringy, depressing or sad quotes and memes that relate to your breakup, or try to make your ex jealous by posting pictures of attractive people of the opposite sex on your timelines, or exciting updates from your life, just with the aim of like I said, making your ex jealous. Instead, what I really recommend is for you to go on a social media detox. This is a conscious elimination or restriction of social media use for a set period of time, usually around 30 to 90 days, so you can emotionally distance yourself from your ex and anything that might remind you of them, any sort of post that may remind you of them, like happy couples or people having kids, that may then reopen your breakup wounds and just prolong your recovery. So that's it for this video. Again, if you want to go deeper into my process for getting an ex back, download my reattraction cheat sheet. Link below this video. With that being said, I wish you all the best and bye bye.